Hi everybody, welcome to my third torsional bar video. In this video I'm going to be solving the problem you see here with this log wrench and we're going to find the maximum shear stress in this piece here due to the turning action and also how much that arm is going to twist. If you want to know something else about torsional bars, feel free to check out any of my other torsional bar videos. So the first thing that we need to do in order to find the shear stress is to define what shear stress is. And we can use that using this sort of series of equations here. So shear stress, we know, is given by this symbol here, this tau, and we just need to solve that in terms of these variables. So usually we're just going to look at these set of variables here. So the shear stress is equal to the torque over the polar moment of inertia, and then of course the radius will also go to that side. So let's just redefine that. Shear stress is equal to T R over J, or G. Yeah, J. Now compare this to not shear stress, but just regular stress, all right? Normal stress, that's force over area. Well, that's essentially the same, all right? We, our torque is the equivalent of our force, and the J is the equivalent of the area, all right? And in this case, we need the R in here because the shear stress is not a constant as we go through the radius. It's going to increase, but I just like to make a comparison between these two equations so I keep in track that this stress is a stress and not some other abstract weird concept. Okay? So, we're given, or not given, let me just tell you, the diameter of this thing to be 3 centimeters. And also I'll give G, it's made of steel, it's 80 gigapascals, all right? So we can use this equation here. We know the radius, and we can find J and find T. So let's go about finding T first. Now we notice that there's these two forces, they're applied from this point, because this is where it's going to be rotating about. So we can say the torque is this force times this distance, plus this force times this distance, or, since we notice it's a case of symmetry and the forces are the same in opposite directions, it's called a moment, or a coupled moment, or a couple, we can just say that this force here times the total distance is the actual force. Okay, so that's going to be 500 times the total distance, that's 0.5, equals 250 newton meters. All right, now the radius, pretty straightforward. The diameter is three centimeters, so the radius is half that. 0 0.015 meters. All right, one, two, move it over two places to get to centimeters, that's 1.5 centimeters. All right, now J, all right, this is the polar moment of inertia. So this is the moment of inertia about a rod, about the end. All right, so just about through this point, so how much it twists. And for any circular section, it's pi by 2 radius to the 4. All right, so this is a pretty easy calculation. We just plug in our radius. And it turns out J is equal to 7.95 times 10 to the minus Eight meters to the four. Okay, so let's just make it very clear where we're going to find these right, radius. Okay, now we have all the ingredients we need to solve this equation. Let's go ahead and plug these in. Two fifty times the radius over. And it turns out to be 47 MPA. And now we were asked for the maximum shear stress. So how do I know that this is max shear stress? Okay, the way we can do that is just to make sure that all the variables in this equation here are maximized. Okay, now T, that's constant for anything. J, that's constant. The radius, we can really choose any radius, but the outer radius, it will give us the biggest value. So if we choose R max, that's going to give us tau max, and that's what we did. 
All right, moving into angle of twist. And let's pull the parts we need out of this equation here. All right, so here's a phi and here's a d phi. All right, for this exercise, I'm gonna use the d phi form to integrate it, even though the force is constant. But I just want you guys to get used to the idea of using this d phi by dx equation if the torque wasn't constant as a function of x. So rearranging some of those terms, we can say d phi is equal to t dx over g j. All right, and these also could be functions of x. All right, notice the comparison to d delta is n dx over e a. All right, here again, our normal force and our torque, our torque or the internal torque is equivalent to a normal force. G and E are both moduluses, and J is our circular form of area. Okay, so let's just go through and solve for phi. So we can integrate both sides of this, summing up all the phi's. Therefore, we can say phi is equal to the integral. Now let's define x to start from right here and work its way out. So x equals 0 to the length of that piece, the length of piece A. That's also 0.25. And then t as a function of x, well, t is constant, so that's just 250 dx over gj. All right, I won't plug those in. Those are given here, g, sorry, g up here, and j here. All right, so moving along, we can just solve for this. Turns out to be phi equals radians. All right, so this equation will always give you your answer in radians. Now the question asks us for degrees. So to convert to degrees, we just use this formula here, two radians times 360 degrees per 2 pi radians. This turns out to be not 0.56 degrees. All right, well, that's a reasonable answer. We can expect that when you're turning the, you know, the bolt off of your car tire, that little piece of metal that you're, the lug wrench that you're turning it with will approximately twist by about a half a degree. All right. So let's quick recap what we did. We found the maximum shear stress by using this equation here. We knew it was a maximum one because we used the maximum R value. Then we went to finding the total twist and we used the differential form of the equation here. Although we could have just used V is equal to TL over GJ. But this only works for discrete scenarios. Although this is a discrete scenario, I've decided to use this one just to make it make it more familiar for you guys for when you see the varying situations later on. And then we found the total twist to be 0.56 degrees. Alright, thanks so much for watching guys. Hope this helps you out and I'll see you in my next torsional bar video.